Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. In this session, we're going to turn our attention to GSM authentication, or in other words, how we ensure only legitimate mobiles get access to the network. In so doing, we're going to deal with the term authentication vectors. These are security parameters, so we're going to see how these are generated and moved around the network. We'll then have a look at the GSM authentication procedure in a little bit more detail. So to begin with them, we need to look at how we generate these security parameters, or authentication vectors. Now, the two key elements within our network dealing with security will be the SIM card, the subscriber identity module within the phone, and the authentication center. This is a security database associated with the home location register. Now, inside both of these devices are mathematical uh, algorithms. These are termed A3 and A8. Now, these algorithms are secret and they are specific to a given service provider. So, they are not the same the world over. Now, also located in both the authentication center and the SIM card is, again, a secret number termed KI, the authentication key. Now, this will be specific for a given subscriber or a given subscription and remains hidden and locked on the SIM card and within the authentication center itself. Now, over in the AUC, we take the KI value and we feed it into the two algorithms, A3 and A8. But at the same time, the authentication center will generate a random number termed RAND. This too will be fed into A3 and A8. As a result of this, the two algorithms will produce additional numbers. Again, they have specific titles, SRES, the signed response that comes from A3, and KC, the cipher key, which is generated out of A8. These two numbers which have been generated, along with the random number that was used in the process of their generation, will become our authentication vector, or in the case of GSM here, it's sometimes referred to as a triplet. Now, over in the SIM card, we still have the KI value. Remember, this is specific to the subscriber, as well as the A3 and A8 algorithms, specific to the service provider's network. So here we will feed in the KI values, again into A3 and A8. But to actually authenticate the mobile, we actually need to send over the random number. So it needs to leave our authentication center and move down across the core network, across the GRAM, over the air interface, and onto the mobile phone. And from the phone, we pass it up into the SIM card, where it too can be fed into the A3 and A8 algorithms, along with the KI. The result of that is the generation, again, of these two numbers. SRES, the signed response, and KC, the cipher key. So to actually authenticate the SIM card, we will then return SRES from the SIM back towards the network. And here we will verify that the SRES that was generated on the SIM card is the same as the SRES which was generated in the authentication center. If they are the same, then we will have successfully authenticated. If they are not the same, well, that will mean that either the KI values are not consistent or the A3 algorithms are not consistent. And as these parameters are secret, that would suggest we have uh, an illegal SIM card on the network. So, let's take a look at the actual GSM authentication procedure. Well, it begins with the authentication center sending down our authentication vectors down to the HLR, the home location register. Remember, the authentication vectors are made up of the random number, SRES, the signed response, and also KCR cipher key. We don't typically send one authentication vector down, we'll send a whole bank of them, such that the HLR against each subscriber will have a number of security parameters ready for authentication for both GSM, GPRS, and also UMTS. So, in this case, we're going to start the process of authenticating our GSM phone. And it will begin with the MSC server the server to which the mobile is attached, sending the send authentication information request message. 
Now, to ensure that we get the correct authentication vector associated with this particular subscriber, this message will contain the IMSI, the International Mobile Subscriber Identity. In response to that, the HLR will return the send authentication information response. And this will contain our authentication vectors, made up of the random number, SRES, our signed response, and also KC as well, the cipher key. Now, we don't typically just send down a single authentication vector to the MSCs. We'll send down a number, possibly three, five, seven, etc., etc. So when we actually come to authenticate the mobile itself, the MSC server sends down an authentication request message. And this message contains the random number, part of our authentication vector. So, upon arriving down at the mobile, the random number will be fed into the SIM card and onto the A3 and A8 algorithms, along with KI, the authentication key, which is specific to this subscriber. The result of feeding into the A3 and A8 algorithms was the generation of the SRES and KC values. And the mobile then will return with the authentication response message, which includes the SRES. The SRES then is passed all the way back up to the MSC server, where we can now carry out a comparison. Has the SRES, which was generated inside the SIM card, is that equal to the SRES that was generated inside the authentication center? If they are, well then the phone has just been successfully authenticated. If they are not, then typically it's down to either the KI values not being consistent or the A3 values not being consistent. And again, these are secret numbers and therefore would suggest a, a cloned or a false SIM card. So then in summary, what have we seen in this video? Well, to begin with, we looked at the method of generating our authentication vectors. Remember, we had the authentication key, KI, which was specific to a subscriber and locked onto the SIM card and the authentication center. We would also then generate a random number inside the authentication center, which we fed into the two algorithms, A3 and A8, generating two outcomes termed SRES, signed response, and KC, the cipher key, which we will use for encryption purposes later. We then had a look at the GSM authentication procedure, which was really made up of two key elements. First of all, the MSC server requesting the authentication vectors from the home location register, made up of our random number, SRES and KC. And then the actual authentication challenge, where we sent the random number down towards the mobile and waited for the response, SRES. We would then compare the two SRES values the one generated in the SIM card against the one generated in the authentication center. If they were the same, then we would have successfully authenticated. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.